And now back to Bobby Likas Car Clinic and your host, Bobby Likas. And welcome back to Bobby Like Us Car Clinic. What a terrific show we're having this morning, folks. Thank you for tuning in every Saturday from 10 to noon right here on Bobby Like Us Car Clinic. And speaking of the car clinic, I'm the proud owner of a classic car, a 1980 Porsche Weissach. So proper storage has always been top of mind with me. And on the Car Clinic hotline with us is Matt Bannock, Senior Director of Marketing at the Gold Eagle Company, to share some storage tips with us today. I, I can't wait because I think I know a little bit about storage, but we've got the guru in the house. Matt, welcome back to Bobby Likas Car Clinic. Well, thank you for inviting me back. Yeah, car storage is one of our uh, favorite things to talk about. Well, you know, Matt, to that end, we're fast approaching the time of year where folks start to store their vehicles. And uh, when should a car clinic listener, our listeners and viewers, think about their vehicles as stored if a vehicle is not driven for at least three or four months, or is that considered storage? It kind of depends on what's your fuel. I mean, we make stable, so we, we look at that a lot. If you think that gas is going to be in your tank for more than 30 days, you should be adding our additive. But, uh, when you start putting stuff away for three or four months, yeah, you should start taking those other precautions that you need to protect, like your paint and your interior and everything else, because you never know what could happen, or time can just get away from you sometimes. Well, uh, to that end, I, I agree. In fact, I've learned uh, th the hard way, which is why I'm so excited to have you in the house today. Uh, years ago, uh, I, I had a, a special car that I stored and kept the windows up. Well, we live in the tropics in, in a humid area, and the white leather interior turned yellow because I kept the windows up. Well, I learned not to do that. But let's switch gears. How long will fuel stay fresh, and, and what really causes fuel to go bad? Uh, so the, the regular gas that most go by, so most of the gas you buy today has 10% ethanol in it, uh, the rest gasoline, and that has a shelf life of about 30 days. So that's why I usually say, depending on how you drive your car, if you drive it every day, you probably don't need to put something in it. But if you drive it only occasionally and that gas sits in there for a month or two at a time, you should be adding stable every time you fill up. Really, you want to stabilize fresh gas. So the, the earlier, like at the pump, is when you want to stabilize it. But when it goes bad, the things that if you don't use the additive, the things that can happen is the gas turns darker, it starts to gum up, um, it loses its light ends kind of quicker. That's the flammability portion of it. Uh, so it can gum up those needle valves, your carburetor jets, everything else. So really, I mean, you want to add it every time you fill up if you don't drive it that much or right before you put it away for storage. I got it. Now, let's talk about fuel stabilizers. D do they help? They absolutely help. I mean, we, there, there's lots out there. We do a lot of third-party testing. We have a lot of OEM recommendations, and you can pretty much ask anyone who's, who's been around cars enough. They, they know that you need to start adding that stuff in there uh, before you put something away for a long time. You're just going to be rebuilding the carburetor and not have a good time when you pull that car out the spring. On the Car Clinic Hotline with us, folks, is Matt Bannock, the Senior Director of Marketing at Gold Eagle. Uh, stable, you've, folks, you've heard me talk about Stable. It's a product that I use in my classic Porsche. Uh, but let's talk about the Stable the product and the storage. Can, can the Gold Eagle products be used in all fuel types and with any engine? Yeah, I mean, gas is gas at some point. I mean, everyone... People might have a collector car or a boat, or I mean, a lot of people have lawnmowers, and all those things are kind of susceptible because they sit a lot. Um, you can use it in any type of gasoline, whether it be your regular gas for your car, for your four-stroke engines like your lawnmower, or your two-strokes for your your weed whackers and, and such. Um, it works in all of them. Uh, just it's managing that gas and making sure you know when you bought it, when you stabilize it, try not to use stuff that's old. Got it, got it. Now, we know it's necessary to use those products like in, in my case where I've got the, the Porsche, but let's shift gears just uh, uh, quickly to uh, today's modern fuel systems. We talked about carburetors, but, you know, carburetors are long since gone. Uh, what about today's gasolines and the injected engines of today? Do they need the same treatment? Yeah, I mean, Newer cars, I mean, you look at, um, I mean, start probably 1985 or so, you start seeing pretty much everything go to fuel injection. So it's it's a little less acceptable. I mean, those pressures on the fuel rails and everything else are more than your carburetor that runs at 4 to 7 PSI or whatever that might be. Um, but you still have issues with the gas going bad, still dark, you know, still gumming things up. Uh, it's, still, it's still a portion of it. Does it last a little bit longer? Yeah, because your fuel system's sealed and you have less issue for moisture. But it doesn't, doesn't change the fact that, gasoline is it eventually goes bad and a lot of people don't realize that kind of like everyone knows the milk goes bad 
but they don't really realize the gas goes bad because they've never really seen it because it's kind of it goes in your tank and you don't see it again. Well, you just hit me between the eyes. You talk about milk going bad. I use nonfat milk, and it comes dated good until the date. And I can tell you, Matt, without exception, I have found that if it says it's good to September 20th, on the eve of the 19th, it goes bad. I mean, <laughs> those bottles, <laughs> they know they know their stuff. And so gasoline, of course, as I understand, and I want to make sure that I, I know right, because when you're, when you're not on the air with me, I'll have questions, and I want to be qualified to answer those questions. Here's what I do on my car, and I want you to just bat me back in my cage if I'm wrong or tell me if I'm right. I fill my tank in my Porsche 95% full, and then I add stable to it, and then I drive it a couple of blocks to make sure I've thoroughly mixed all that uh, additive and the fuel, and then I store it with the windows down, and uh, I leave it on the ground, although I, you can, you know, jack it up on jacks, but I do drive it occasionally, but I don't drive it often enough to burn that fuel. So I guess my question is specifically, how long can I expect the fuel in my car that I don't drive, and so therefore I don't use the gas that's in it, how long will the stable keep my uh, E10 uh, fuel fresh b before I really should think about, you know, how to, how to drive it or how to get rid of the fuel? And then the last question for that is where can everyone go that's tuned in here in Car Clinic uh, for more information about this very topic from Gold Eagle? So I would say that you get an A-plus on the way you're treating your fuel and everything else because filling that thing 95% fuel full with fresh gas and then putting the fuel stabilizer or stable in it and running it a little bit gets that stabilized fuel distributed to your whole fuel system so it's up to carburetors or up to injectors and does all it's supposed to do. Um, if you do that, your fuel will be good for two years. So you already stabilized fresh fuel, and that's the best-case scenario. Um, all your other storage tactics, it's a matter of preference. At some point, I mean, some people like to go to the nth degree with jack stands and car covers and everything else. Right. The only thing that um, you might want to look at is they sell like damp rid types of things you put in your interior to make sure it's absorbing the moisture, so you don't get any issues if you're in that really humid area. That might be something good for you to look at. Great but, uh, idea. Great idea. You you have you have a good two years on your gas uh, the gas side of that. So I think that's I think you're doing the right thing. Okay, and and, and uh, one last question then, uh, and folks, Matt Bannock is the senior director of marketing for Gold Eagle. Uh, where can our car clinic listeners and viewers go for more information? Well, I'm really biased, but I think our uh, GoldEagle.com, our website, which you go there, you search Stable.com, you can it'll come take you to kind of the same place. Uh, we have lots of articles that tell you the right way to store cars. It'll take you to the nth detail of like where you should store at, being on concrete, the the uh, air absorber from moisture, I mean, different types of car covers, they'll take you through everything. So you can go as, as far as you want with how you, well you want to store your car, what your, what your preference is. Well, I, again, I want to thank you for joining us, Matt, on Bobby Likas Car Clinic. You know, it's a subject that, uh, that I practice, and it's uh, a question that, uh, quite candidly, a lot of people that have classic cars, number one, they're not really sure if theirs is the classic car, but it doesn't have to be a classic car to be stored if you're going overseas or on TDY in, in the military. And of course, Pensacola, you know, is the Naval Air Station is here. So we have a lot of military uh, folks. And uh, quite candidly, we work in our service shop which is where our studios are located within our service shop, uh, a lot of military vehicles. So it's great information. I'm glad that you came back today, and thank you for your time. Uh, Matt Bannock, Senior Director of Marketing for Gold Eagle. Folks, it's goldeagle.com. Matt, thank you so much for joining us today on Bobby Likas Car Clinic. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate you having me on.